Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio. In between the episodes I played for multiple hours in order to be able to bring you an awesome episode today. Maybe let's check out what I've been doing. First and foremost, you can clearly see I've been disassembling a couple of things, especially in the south and I've been replacing everything with solar panels. At the moment the old starter base doesn't get any new supplies and therefore it also came to a halt and we're gonna disassemble that very soon. Also I doubled up on the amount of iron ore and copper ore we can store and ship around. Additionally I copied over another design of the iron smelting process. So now we have 5 smelting contraptions with 4 lines each meaning we are smelting 20 lines of iron if everything goes well. Because I took everything away in the south I also had to compensate a little bit and I decided all the ore is going to be shipped in from this rail and you can see I've just been expanding and tapping into several deposits in order to accomplish that. I've also relayed the portion here so everything we are collecting here is first going to go up and over. The reason we had to do that is because we cannot have much traffic coming down this route here. I would like to reserve this for signs and my personal crafting system only. But yeah, getting this ready took a really, really long time in order to be able to get this episode started. So I really hope we can appreciate what we have in mind today. Let me also check the amount of solar panels. We now have exactly or almost exactly 111,000 solar panels. Not too shabby, I would say. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get crafting. I would like to see at least three rocket silos because that is exactly what we need. So maybe we are just gonna temporarily order these things. I'm gonna need a thousand steel plates, please. We also need 200 processing units. We're gonna need 200 electrical engines. Thank you. And what else? 1,000 pieces of concrete. I believe we should be able to also deliver that. And then we can already build it. Yeah, look at all my robots coming in for me. That's great. So one rocket silo, we're gonna build another one. But before I actually click that, I wanna get rid of those requests again. So now we can build it, get rid of those, build it, and we are golden. Man, I just love the logistics system for things like that. Also by now we are actually full again on speed modules which is great, I've been missing them. Um, let me maybe craft a couple more, I'm just gonna take away two lines or so, so we can keep on crafting. If I remember correctly there was a contraption with barely any modules yet, yeah look at that, but we did build everything required, it just needs a couple more modules. So I'm gonna make my way over here, place as many modules as possible and after that we're gonna come back here in order to do the white signs. We will also need to grab the rocket silo I have from over here. As a matter of fact we're gonna disassemble the starter base completely. There you go guys, take the modules, be happy, live strong and prosper. Wonderful, and now all the contraptions are actually completely built. I believe so, at least. Yeah, there we go. There are all the modules in there already. Oh, this is great! So now we only need to focus on supplying things such as the low density structures. They probably need more copper, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, look at that. We need to deliver more copper, which means we should probably copy over another copper smelter. But then again, at the moment, we don't get our full potential because we need to tap into more copper veins. This is always a good sign. If I see a lot of white here, that means we are not delivering enough copper to the base. But yeah, now I believe it's time to think about the rocket design. We're gonna need to supply three silos with uh, three different materials, if I'm not mistaken. No, actually four, if you count the satellite. That means we probably have our rocket silos like so and then of course filled up with productivity modules. The question is how quickly do I need to fill this up? I believe we are gonna need at least one stack inserter, right? Hmm, I'm not sure if I need two input lines or just one. Let's actually see, I should have it somewhere here. Yeah, we need 2.8 silos with, ooh, 12 beacons, okay. And that would actually consume almost an entire belt of input materials. So we need them a little bit further apart, at least three blocks. We cannot even have our input materials here. We need to relay them towards the side. So what if we just had input lines like so? We could then divide up the rocket fuel and bring it towards the side. We can then do something like that and hop over here. Actually, I'm gonna need 
a splitter at this point and then we can continue yeah that would be a fairly straightforward and easy design and we can basically just copy this over we can then extract the science packs here in the center and they will want to move over to the other side where we are going to do the research. Okay, I was thinking of something like that. We have two input lines. One is going to be, let's see, we have rocket control units and low density structures. And then we're going to split up the rocket fuel just for symmetry purposes. We can then easily import our goods like so. We even have the potential to add more inserters if necessary. And then all the science packs are going to be coming out this way. Hopefully filling up an entire belt. And then over on the other side we're going to do the research. For the research of course we're also going to need the six stations for the science pack. So there's going to be six train stations just to get those materials. On the left side we're going to need just the three train stations right yeah i don't think i have the low density structures just yet i only imported the goods that i really need for crafting and so low density structures are gonna go on the top somewhere so let's think about that we will have the rail continue just like normal then i want to leave just enough space let's see hmm. i don't think there's gonna be many more materials but i want to leave enough room just in case something's going on and then right here would be our first science station. Now for the science, I have a sushi belt contraption in mind that utilizes belts. So I want to make sure I can actually get the materials out of there, not like with the stations we have here at the bottom. So essentially, we're going to have a train station here. Then we probably need an unloading thingamabob. As a matter of fact, let's maybe redesign this. I would like to see six inserters taking care of that, delivering them to some storage chests, and then bringing them out on some belts. You get a little bit of power, of course, and then we probably want to connect this to the station. We want to tell the station to enable and disable, depending on the amount of science packs we have. Now, let me see. We have 24 chests with 4,800 science packs each. No, actually more. So I think what we're going to try is about 50,000 science packs. So I would like to see another train if we drop below the 50,000 mark. We would then be leaving the station towards the top. I don't want to go down. Actually, we could go down easily. It's not like we have a lot of train traffic there. So we just connect this. That's good. Great. Now it's all about the design to get these things out of there. And then my suggestion would be to start a couple of rows here. We're going to need six rows, right? That means my red science pack is going to go here. And then this would be the lines for the following science pack. That means technically we can copy this over, make sure we leave just enough space, and then this would be for the next science pack, right? Uh, did I already rename the station? Not really. So this would be unload the red science pack, and Papa X would be unload the green science pack. And now we just continue doing this until we have all the stations. Alrighty, here we go. Everything prepared. If we have a look at the stations, here we have all the science packs. And of course, here we are going to create the white science packs. And in the end, everything is going to end up right here on these seven belts. So I would say without any further ado, it's time to set up the trains. We're going to have two trains per science pack. So maybe let's just go ahead and prepare that. And conveniently enough, I can grab some new locomotives here, just a couple of meters down south. I also got some spare nuclear fuel that I'm gonna feed into the trains. And so now we can get started programming the trains. Of course it's gonna follow the same pattern, nothing changes. I'm gonna give them some nuclear fuel and then they can get started. So you can already go and we want to do the same thing with a second train. Let's just give this, uh, let's give it two and then you go as well. Okay, and now we're just going to do all the science packs with the trains this way. And of course, on the other side, I'm also going to launch trains for the other products. Actually, we already have trains for the low density structures and the rocket fuel. Of course, we need to change something in the supply chain to make this faster. And then I'm going to need some trains for the rocket control units. Okay, it is once again a little bit later. I decided to stack up on some materials. For instance, I inserted the missing copper smelting facility here. I tapped into another stone deposit here and I also sped up everything concerning oil. 
with a whole bunch of chaotically placed beacons. As I was waiting for some materials to distribute, for instance the low density structures, if I can find them right here, they should now almost work. Yeah, I had to stack up on steel as well. So I added another steel facility here. We still only get one belt per facility and so at the moment we get two entire belts. Another thing I had to fix are the beacons here for my rocket silos, as you can see. Totally forgot that I planned this out with 12 beacons, but now this is fixed and we still have all the lines going here. You can see how I've done this. But yeah, we're waiting for the low density structures. This could still take a while because, yeah, right here we still have to fill up four stations with the low density structures. And therefore that is a slight problem. However, what we can do is take apart the rest of the starter base. I am actually looking forward to this. This is kind of a celebration that we finally dive into the next step. Forget about the starter base and start researching Megabase style. Okay then, without any further ado, let's just go ahead and do this. I might destroy a couple of materials. We are not dependent on saving everything. I just want to make sure we collect the entirety of the base and then replace it with solar panels. Let's maybe set up a couple of chests here and then we can input those materials that we don't want to save. Blow up the chests in the end. Yeah, this is always some piece of work to disassemble something that is full of saturated belts and machines. What are you gonna do? There we go, full inventory. Let's see, we can get rid of those modules, steel, arm plates. We got enough of all that at the new base. We're now taking care of the old research base. Let's see, don't need those, those, those. Oh man, slowly I don't know what to get rid of. I'm gonna make another chest of things I actually want to keep just to get some space. Alright, I think we got everything. Let's maybe place a couple of solar arrays so I can get rid of what I have in my inventory. Then we pick up this chest and you can go. See ya. Maybe I actually have enough stuff in order to wrap this up. Let's try. It's like painting pixels at this point. I observed the train situation a little bit and made my first fix because the system was overburdened. The fix I had in mind is actually something I kind of considered from the beginning, but it is the easiest fix and everything else would be considerably more tedious to implement. What is the fix? Well, instead of making all the trains go down into this intersection, they now go up. So I'm using this rail that they used previously to go down in order to go up. And this just goes all the way along here and now they take a little detour. Of course that means more travel time, but overall they are much quicker because they don't have to stop and wait all the time. It's a pretty steady flow once everything gets going, you know, and all the trains can go to their destination. We might be doing that to some more stations where the traffic is just unbearable. But for the moment this completely eradicated my problem with the train traffic. We still don't have the low density structures. I don't think this is actually going to happen anytime soon. Well, at least we have all the stations full now. Okay, this is a good sign. That means the low density structures can go and you can see we are filling up a train pretty quickly. But then again, we still have to fill up all of these stations. Oh my gosh, how many of these do we even have at the moment? We have 80,000 and we want to store 230,000 in this station only. So yeah, unfortunately that is still gonna take a while. What could we do to speed things up? I guess all we can do is check whether or not we actually supply the demand here for the low density structures. If that now has a steady flow, it might just be a couple of minutes until we have these stations full. Though, jeez. It's already all used up again. I just realized I also need to fix the design here. Of course this is not distributing correctly and it looks as though I have this for multiple stations. Not sure. Ah okay I went with that because of the beacons but of course this is nonsense it is not distributing correctly. This is more like it. This is what we actually want to see. Looks like we're still keeping up with the demand here. All the stations are being served quite immediately and we still have plenty of materials in the station. Oh, I just noticed the plastic isn't distributing correctly. Looks like I didn't take care of all the lines. We have to split it here and then, I don't know, just make sure the other two lines get saturated as well. Yeah, of course, we don't even get our full potential of low density structures at the moment. Here we go. We need a little split here and maybe another split there. We then do this and 
that, get this belt saturated and do... Uh, hold on, we have to hop over here and then we can get the other belt saturated as well. Great, this is much more like it. Now all the machines will be activated. And I guess in the meantime, we can go back and actually set up our science sushi belt. Now, the goal is going to be to kind of mix all the materials evenly. So on any given belt, we have all the seven science packs available. And then they're just going to rotate around a science lab construction. And therefore, we will only really need one blue belt to feed the entirety of the laboratory. First things first, we need to think about that. How are we gonna mix materials? If we have one science pack going in here and another going in there, then what we should be seeing is an even mix between the two. I think I have to think backwards. Let's say we have the already mixed belt here and it's coming in here in order to sort. I mean, we don't necessarily use up the science packs evenly, and so at some point I want to sort them out again. And this should be easy enough if we just say, for instance, this guy here is going to sort out. Um, let me see the order. I have yellow here. So let me do it the other way around so I don't get confused. We can then always flip it later. Red, green, gray, blue, purple, yellow and white. All of this is going to continue. And with each splitter, we sort out one science pack. Actually, the last one isn't needed because white will be the only thing that's left. I'm already going to program this in. That will be the red one and it's filtered out on the right side and everything else is continuing. Let me just set this up. Now we want to go ahead and actually combine this with the new fresh input. So we will have to set up a bunch of splitters here as well. Those will be using the first input and then the new materials can hop over here. So we will kind of have to distribute them a little bit better, but maybe let's bring this down a bit. And this contraption here is gonna be our sorting machine. Now that we have it sorted, we wanna evenly mix it. We are first gonna mix red and green, and then gray and blue, purple and yellow here. And the white, I guess, will join the last. Hmm. I'm not so sure this is going to give me the distribution I really want, but let's assume it does and we just go like so. Wait, yeah, we have to connect this, connect that and that. It is certainly not going to give us an even distribution. Hmm. I think I kind of want to observe how it behaves first. Um, this is going to be the white here, so we want to connect this as well. So here we have the mixed belt. This can go anywhere, but then needs to come back here in order to be sorted out again. Um, let's bring it all the way down. Okay, and now we kind of want to test this out. I only really need a small sample of each science pack. Oh my gosh, hopefully I have the space for that even. Yeah, I think I do, but just about. Jeez, that was close. Of course, this experiment will now run without the white science packs, but what are you going to do? Okay, this went really fast. And the belt is already overburdened because we don't use it up again. Uh, can I have some priorities here, maybe? The problem here is I started with a bunch too many red science packs. Now it is actually running. Wow, this looks actually really colorful. But then at some point it doesn't continue. Huh, actually look at this. Maybe this is gonna work. I mean, this looks pretty even to me. Well, I did not think this would distribute this well, but there we go. I guess we can get this started. So I'm not even sure how many laboratories we can entertain with this, but there we go. We should do something like this and then probably have a stack inserter or two. Hmm. I guess we actually don't need to exaggerate. I'm gonna get started here. We're gonna build a couple of these guys. So you wanna go straight instead, move up there and over and i guess i got the inserters at the wrong spot now but oh my gosh guys it is finally happening just need to hop over do that 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 oh yeah and then of course we want to come back around to this place okay and with that out of the way we can hopefully get this party started well actually we're still missing the white science packs but what you gonna do Okay, now the only question is, can I have this permanently enabled and it is not gonna mess things up for me? Let's see. Like, I want the rainbow pattern going on all the time. Okay, all the material is incoming. Now, this might get interesting. Yeah, I'm not so convinced about that. On the other side, it just comes to a halt, which is not that bad either. I think we just have to observe it once we are doing research and see if it is really a problem. 
Wonderful. With the beacons all filled up, we have the potential to multiply these science labs a couple of times. And then I guess by the beginning of the next episode, I will have everything ready so we can finally get the white research in as well and then go crazy and nuts. I mean, I just want to go and increase the robot speed so badly at this point. But here we go. I'm actually pretty happy with how easily this worked out. I mean, this looks pretty even. As a matter of fact, almost perfect. So I expect it to fail at least in the next episode. But with that out of the way, have a great time. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.